Well, perhaps for one final time, I've pulled up the Dromai background because if you haven't heard the news, Dromai has officially hit the living legend status as we all expected after the pro tour with her being only four points away uh yep she is officially on the living legend leaderboard now that pro quest season has begun she took a large portion of well perhaps large is not the correct word but a decent portion of the wins of pro quest season everybody knew this was going to be her last week and they sent her out in style. I tried to join the club, unfortunately it did not go well for me on my end. Getting high rolled sometimes is just the name of the game. And while I couldn't punch my own ticket with her in the final week of her uh, classic constructed lifespan, we'll put it that way, a lot of players did. So in the first week of ProQuest season, as you can see, Dromai Ash Artist picks up the lion's share of the wins, 20 wins on uh, her final week in the game in Classic Constructed, I should say. KO Armed and Dangerous continuing to prove that he's a good deck at 15. Dorinthia Ironsong showing up and showing out really after that breakout performance at ProQuest season continues to show that the uh, Hatchets version, Dawnblade, and uh, even Decimator Great Axe are all playable and all very good. But Prism, Prism is now at the uh, tops of the leaderboard, if you will, towards the top with 10 wins, tying Victor as well and that is just that's interesting i will say i was not expecting to see prism that high i did expect to see prism kind of surge in popularity after people getting hyped around her but still that's that's a pretty big deal azalea right behind with nine katsu with seven kasai with oh four excuse me kano with three and then a nice split of a bunch of other heroes but we're not here to talk about those other heroes for a moment, we're going to take a moment and talk about Dromai and what she means leaving the format. And peeling back behind the curtain, I've got to say, this is a this is a very... Bittersweet's not the right word. It's just a little bit more sad than it is sweet. It's not sweet to see a friend go away. And that, to me, is kind of what Dromai is. Uh, the first real deck I think I fell in love with in Classic Constructed and um, I've, I've felt varying degrees of feelings for all the heroes that have uh, left the format in Living Legend status. Sometimes it's excitement uh, because I want to know what happens next. Sometimes it's uh, vindication because now I don't have to wait while an Oldham player counts for five minutes and then finally says crown. Uh, and sometimes it's confusion. Like, I like Icelander and then I also like that Frostbites are gone. But for this one, it's genuine sadness. I am sad to see Dromai go. I put away my Dromai deck yesterday after the uh, after the completion of the ProQuest, and I don't know when I'm going to take it back out. And I know that there's a lot of people that feel this way about their specific hero, but I think Dromai was the hero that I felt the most attached to. And uh, if you feel that way too, I gotta I gotta shout out. Look, I gotta shout this out. HB on uh, Twitter makes these adorable freaking keychains that are all the dragons. Look, you've got Kyloria. Oh my God, it's adorable. You got Kyloria trying to get its little gold there. Uh, you've got Mira guy. Mira guy with the little whiskers. I'll see if we can get the whis whiskers in there. You see the little, little whiskers on the side. I like that. You've got Yenderai, the most underrated. Well, probably not the most underrated. The most uh existing of dragons yender i always felt kind of bland to me you got yender uh who's there and then the bestest dragon of all tomaltai the cutest little tomaltai you've ever did see uh i had to shout these out because i mean it's the perfect time if you would like to carry a piece of dromai with you every that sounds creepy if you would like to carry a dragon with you everywhere you can pick these up. I'll put a link to uh, the where you can where you can uh, talk to HB about these. Uh, it's Parker's wife. Parker's uh, wonderful uh, wife makes these, uh, and you should get some because these are adorable and they are now permanent mainstays on my keychain. And I will I will always remember these little dragon friends. And before we dive into some of the meta changes that we've already seen take place in week number one of ProQuest, I want to start by pointing something out. About six months ago, they made a change to the Living Legend status updates the way that a hero rotates. They changed it to be, in a way, more fluid. That you could 
conceivably earn the final points for a hero to reach living legend status and then that very next week they would be uh, immediately LL'd out and the format would change right away rather than waiting until the end of a season to do so. And there was a lot of uncertainty and in some cases a lot of backlash as to how this would affect the game. And well, let's take a look because Dromai was oftentimes used to sort of describe this. Seeing as Dromai was, when at the time, sitting around like, I don't know, 500, 600 living legend points, right? And so there was a chance that Dromai, uh, maybe even 700, could just like, poof, LL, just go away if like Worlds is picked up by Dromai and like one other tournament, you know, like for example, that could happen. It very well could happen. Looking at how this transpired, really gives me a lot of excitement and it gives me a lot of uh, just assuredness as to that change and its benefit. Because we, as a collective community, saw Dromai get to the precipice and almost cross it. At which point, everyone knew when this would happen, when she would rotate. We knew that it would come at the beginning of ProQuest season because she didn't reach it prior to that. Now, if she had reached it prior to that, that would have been the end of her story, you know, like at Pro Tour, for example. But instead, she reached it at the beginning of ProQuest season. So what does that mean? It means that we're not stuck with a lame duck meta for ProQuest season. It means that you can go to multiple ProQuests and now next week's ProQuest is going to fundamentally be different from this week's ProQuest, for better or for worse. And in many cases, I bet you, the people that you ask are going to say that it is for the better. Now, there is a chance, of course, that someone could show up to ProQuest week two and say, I brought my Dromai deck, I'm ready to play, and then someone has to tell them that Dromai has LL'd. I want to know, if that happens at your pro quest, please, sincerely, let me know. Because I do not believe that it is going to happen very often, if at all. Now, it could happen, that's why I want you to let me know, but I will also say that LSS acknowledges this as a possibility, released a specific article stating that she was going to be gone on Friday, posted it all over social media as well, not only posting it today, but also yesterday over the weekend. So they've posted it in multiple places, multiple times, and now here's a bunch of people making videos about it, myself included. If a, a player of the game isn't connected and isn't well like plugged into the online community and the discourse surrounding said uh, community, they can still miss it. But at what point do we say that LSS and the community has done their due diligence? At what point do we say that? That is my point. And to me, this rotation and the change that happened six months ago that everyone felt a little bit uncomfortable about has chalked up in a lot of cases to an LSS win. This is the right move. This was the right call, and it's provided everybody going forward an opportunity to try a uh, new meta in a ProQuest season that would otherwise just be dominated with a lot of similar stuff. There was still a dynamic meta like leading out of Pro Tour with new heroes, but at the same time, now we get a nice little shift as well off of Dromai. What could happen? Now that Dromai's gone, does Prism reign supreme? Let's talk about it. Now that Dromai is out of the picture, what do we see in this meta? What do we expect to see? Well, I'm just gonna tell you using this screen because I think it's the easiest way to do it. I expect, uh, where is she? I expect Dorinthia Ironsong to do some uh, to do some wonders here. I would expect uh, her to go up. I think Azalea is already showing that she is just really, really powerful, particularly Brody's list. By the way, if you did not watch the, uh, if you didn't watch the deck tech that we put together, Brody and I sat down, we talked through his deck. We spent a long time talking about it. It's really good. I am so happy with how that video turned out. And he showed up and showed out how to perform that deck uh, and how to play that deck to the T. Uh, and yeah, you, you got to go check that out. That list in particular is doing quite well, but could be subject to change very soon. I think Azuri 
is part of the reason why it is subject to change. I think KO and Kasai are both decent in the meta. Um, Kasai is what I'm currently playing right now. And it's one that I think uh, feels fairly good into everyone, but not so incredibly good that it's just like a not, a, not auto win. Azalea is not an auto win, but it's not so powerful that it just slams like damage on the board, something like a KO or an Azalea does. Uh, but Kasai feels very good. KO still feels very good. Uh, Victor is starting to climb in prominence. I think because of the way this has shifted, I could see Bravo continuing to climb in prominence again. Levia feels tough to pin down because of all those tentacles. I mean, when you think about it, it would be really difficult to hold her. Never mind. Um, Levia seems tough to pin down simply because uh, she's very difficult to play and requires a lot of finesse. Yes, that's right. All Levia players are finessed. You're welcome. Uh, Prism also feels the exact same way, but here's the problem. People simp hard for Prism, and when they do that, they learn how the deck works. And this is why we can't have nice things, because the moment one illusionist leaves, another one takes her place. It's like the, it's like the Hydra. One head gets chopped off and two beautiful illusionists. Wait, no, that's not how that works. Nevertheless, you understand where I'm getting at. Uh, so I think Prism is going to climb, but I think it's a difficult deck that perhaps has some holes in it. And if Prism loses to anything, it's Vinset. Maybe it's time for Vinset? No, probably not. Uh, Kano is the real winner of this format because we can do everything as Kano. You can play fast, you can play the long game, you can do whatever you want as Kano. And so how do you beat Kano? Well, LSS printed 48,000 hate cards to do so. So he'll be relatively obscure and hard to play in general. And he'll probably be in, like middling overall because that's kind of how Kano is. He's really good until he's not. Uh, but this is where I see the meta falling. I feel like because Azalea is really good, people are going to say, okay, how do we combat a deck that just wants to play three pumps and an arrow that uh, does like four on hits and makes it to where I can't have fun because all of Azalea's on hits are unfun and unfair? Well, I'm going to make it to where she can't do that. She can't block very well. So I'm going to play Azuri and have on hits of my own. Da -na -na -na, and then everyone's happy and the, and the meta is solved. No, that's not going to be the case. But Azuri is a natural counter to Azalea and to some of the other heroes in the format. And uh, not only that, but uh, there's a little card called Warmonger's Diplomacy that if is included into some of these decks, like there's a lot of heroes in this that can just play that card and, and kind of just hate away Azalea in its current form. And so Azalea then has to, you know, adapt and start playing uh, maybe your uh, E-Strikes package again, maybe your Scar for Scars, your Ravenous Rabbles, what are your CNCs, whatever you, you want to play there. But the deck has to change from the one that exists now in its current state because uh, in its current state, it wants to do a very specific thing that Warmonger's Diplomacy stops. So that is a, uh, a hinge point, I think. Uh, and if that is the case, then the kind of simple and quiet resurgence of Viscerai then probably gets tamped back down unless, again, you're playing the OTK version, which is actually doing pretty well. That's pretty cool. Uh, but I would expect to see more decks run uh, the Warmonger's Diplomacy kind of tech card against the meta. Uh, and also I would see more people playing like Time Snap Potion. In fact, those are both cards that I've added to Kasai in the past 24 hours. Ah, there you go. There's your tip right there. There it is. Um, also, interestingly enough, if all of these decks throttle down their power levels and their damage outputs by even just a little bit, then heroes like Teclavasen, who like defend really well, keep everything in front of them, and then flip into an unbeatable board state of just... I have things that make you discard twice and my pivot turn is just so much better than anything you can deal with. He has a chance. Um, I think that is really, really cool and really scary. So I think he has a real chance to actually come up. And to some degree, so does Max. Like if, for example, there's a bunch of uh, Kasai's that are all mid-range control and there are a bunch of Dorinthias that are all mid-range control hatchets that are just trying to get super value, Max can just find the combo and just 
become the Nitro Mechanoid and do the thing. And the decks that can do the thing into a bunch of mid-range garbage can actually just perform. That's pretty cool. And that's the meta that we're perhaps going into the way I see it now that Dromai is officially gone. So let me know what your thoughts about Dromai heading off into the sunset uh, are. I want to know what you're thinking about it. I am a little bit sad, but I'm going to uh, drown out my sadness in these wonderful dragons. Again, you should pick some up and support uh, Breezy and his wife. Uh, as they make these wonderful things. I think it's literally just her. I think she's just the one that does it. HB on Twitter. Uh, again, you'll check it out in the link in the description because you can get these adorable little dragons. Okay, bye.